Okay, we are live. Hi, Paula. Hi, Cynthia. Hi, Renee. Okay, we're getting some people on here. Hi, Babette. Glad you could join me today. Okay, I'm getting alerts on my phone. I guess we're going to be having some bad weather or something. So, hey, Winky, how are you? All the way from Norway. I believe it's Norway, right? Hi, Marianne. Okay, we're getting. We're getting the crowd. All right. So today, I'm going to be doing a chainmail bracelet. This is the barrel design. Um, I'm sure it's called other things. It seems like a lot of the chainmail bracelets have multiple names. So uh, this is how I heard of it. And, um, uh, you know, the... That's what I'm going for. Anyway, this is the bracelet. I'm going to pull you down here. And as you know, most of the uh, pieces that I do are in copper just to keep expense down. But I love copper anyway, so um, it works well for me. Anyway, that is what we're going to be working on today. Hey, Janet. Okay, um, chain mail is kind of difficult to um, to show you, you know, in this way, rather than like a one-on-one -on -one type of class where I can just come down and, and make sure that you're getting everything in the right uh, placement. But um, we're going to do the best we can. Um, I have some larger rings that uh, I'm going to practice with or show you on and maybe that will be easier for you to see. Um, you don't have to put any of the bling on here if you don't want to. That's totally up to you. I put um, four millimeter crystals and um, four millimeter pearls. Those all the, although those kind of look like three millimeter, but I think they're fours. Um, I kind of alternated crystals and pearls on here, but if you didn't like those, uh, if you don't want crystal, you could put um, little 6-0 uh, multicolored seed beads on there if you would prefer that sort of thing uh, rather than the, than the shiny. So I see um, the broadcast is kind of going in and out. I'm hoping that we'll have a decent one though today. Um, okay, so I'll go ahead and I'll get started on here. On, um, on this one, I put a toggle clasp. This one's kind of small, but it's one that I had. So I put the toggle clasp on here, but the one that I'm going to do today, I'll put uh, that half S clasp on that today. So, um, but you can put the clasp of choice, you know, on, on yours if you decide to make one. All right. So I'll get that out of the way. The only things that you really need for, for doing this chain mail is I suggest you have an awl or a T-pin. One or the other will work. You don't have to have both. Just sometimes they come in handy. And a twist tie like from a bread wrapper or something like that, just or a piece of wire. It doesn't have to necessarily be this, but um, I just find it easier to hold on to when you're just getting started. So um, that's what I'm going to use. I've already started uh, the sample one that I'm going to do today because it would be really boring and long to just watch me do this whole thing. So 
I'll try to uh, streamline it a little bit. Now I had some larger jump rings that I'll do something else with, but I had these available. So I thought I might start off showing you the pattern with the larger pieces. Hey, Suni. Um, it's easier. I hope it'll be easier for you to see them uh, because they're larger. They uh, probably won't nest quite as well as the smaller links will, but at least you'll get the pattern. Okay, and then two pairs of flat nose pliers I would highly recommend. Um, if you don't have two pairs of flat nose, you can use one pair of flat nose and one pair of chain nose, but I like the fact that the flat nose have a little bit wider head and it's easier to, um, to not slip off it's easier to slip off with the chainmail pliers, so you have a little bit more um, uh, ground here, you know, with the wider surface. All right, so in, in all the chainmail uh, that I do, I always recommend that you open up a bunch of rings, and by opening, I'm, I mean by taking your pliers on either side of the opening of the jump ring, and just give it a little twist, open. I don't want you to open it so wide that you distort the, um, the ring, but it needs to be opened. And don't um, pull them apart, you know, like that. Always give them a twist to open up like that. Hi, Mary, how are you? Okay. Oh, Suni, you got your fire extinguishers? That's great. Yeah, I think, um, I hope you never need to use them, but uh, I think that they are going to be nice to have around uh, right where you're working, just in case you have a little bit of a fire problem. Um, I had mentioned that last week that um, I was working on something and actually my husband was trying to, to fix one of my torch heads and, uh, we were kind of in the middle of the room and the fire extinguishers were like on either side. So, um, the torch head, uh, caught on fire and he, he was very good about, you know, taking care of it right away. He, he dropped it and, uh, put something over it and snuffed out the fire right away. But, you know, it could have been a, a bad situation. So uh, he was very quick thinking. Me, I was not so much, but uh, I just thought, you know, if I had one of those cans handy, uh, it would have been a lot easier than getting the fire extinguisher out. And uh, anyway, so... Uh, I had just recommended that that would be a good thing for you guys to have near your benches if you work with fire. Uh, the Marianne, the bracelet that I'm doing today is 18 gauge wire. Uh, I did not say that previously. So it's 18 gauge wire and these are four millimeter. Okay, that's, that's the bracelet. These that I'm working on are just practice ones. Uh, so that really doesn't make any difference so um hey wendy hi janet yeah it was uh it was scary for a quick minute but uh you know it would have been nice to have one of those small cans nearby i i always uh i've never really had to use a regular fire extinguisher and they kind of intimidate me i guess i should uh test one out but you know, I don't know that once you use it, if you can use it again, or if you just have to have it refilled. Um, I really don't know. So, okay, so I've opened up some of these larger jump rings. And on your, uh, when you do your bracelet, you're going to put one jump ring on the twist tie. And then to that jump ring, we're going to add a jump ring. 
close it nice and tight. You should not be able to see any space. Okay, and then to that jump ring, we're going to add one more jump ring. So it's three long. And then to that jump ring, I'm going to add a second ring and close those tight. Oh, thank you, Nancy. Yeah, um, I just put a little S clasp on here for right now, but I have to come up with something a little bit nicer uh, for this, but I wanted to wear it. So thank you for that. That was truly a labor of love. Let me see if I can get up closer a little bit to you guys. I don't know if you can see quite well. Maybe you can. Kind of just elevate this a little bit, maybe. See if that helps any. Okay, so right now, you have a single, a single, and then two in this second jump ring. Okay, so now we're going to take a jump ring. Eh, maybe this isn't going to work. If it's going to lift up. Okay, now we're going to take an open jump ring and put it through the two. And then, this is the tricky part, then you're going to swing back and put this through the top, the very first jump ring. Got it? You're going to come with this open one and swing back and grab this one. Close your jump ring. And now you have, let me see if I can lay this down so that you can see it maybe better. It's really hard to show you guys this. But what I'm doing here is I put the next jump ring that you want to put is where my all is going through. Okay? And then I drop it. That's okay because you need to know how to deal with it when you're doing this stuff. And that's where a T-pin comes in handy if you're working on your, um, say if you're working on a bead mat, you could just put that T-pin in here to hold your space so that way you know where your jump ring is supposed to be placed. So like that. Once you do this a few times, you'll you'll know where it's supposed to go, but it's just in the beginning that it can be confusing. Okay, so let my T-pin fall out there and then close this ring. So, this is like the first unit of the barrel. Okay, so it's like everything kind of goes to mush when I put it down, but can you see that all right? All right, so then in moving forward, we're going to put another jump ring oh this is annoying me let's see here this will be better there we go 
Hey, Tammy. Okay, so I put one jump ring on here, attached to that one that we looped through, and then another jump ring. Now, in the handout, I've got all these steps photographed uh, with the small rings, and then after I realized I could demonstrate with these big ones, I added uh, some blown up pictures so that you could see the movements a little bit easier. Okay, so I've added two single rings and a set of double, and I'm going to take this open ring and swing back to this first ring that I added and close that. And then I need to get that space probably only can see my hands. The space between the two. And close that up. Can you see that okay? All right. This looks kind of weird because it's so large. Might make a nice necklace chain. I don't know. It seems kind of big, though. All right. So we'll just keep on with the pattern. Just a couple more like this. And then I'll move to the small ones. So I'm adding one. Adding two, and then add a second one to that. All right, so I have my two again. And I slip this through the two and then swing back to this first ring that you added and go through here. Close it up. And then take my ring and I'm putting it right through here. Okay. It's really, this one is a really simple pattern once you get, well, I guess they're all simple once you get the concept of it, but there's not a whole lot difference, uh, different stuff going on here. It's the same, the same moves over and over and over again. They don't lay quite as nice when they're big like this as they as they nest a little bit better when they're smaller. Okay. All right, so I'm going to keep going with well, I guess I'll move this over. I'll add a few links onto this one. This actually makes a nice chain just like this, too. If you have any questions just or comments, just go ahead and put them in, and I'll be able to look at them periodically, since not a lot is going on with this. There's no fire involved.
but the important thing is that you close all your jump rings really well so that there's nothing scratchy on your skin. Well, my goodness. And this is a pattern that goes relatively quickly, especially if you have all your jump rings opened up uh, before you get started. It really helps keep moving things along. How do I like my new micro saw or my band saw? Yes, I like it. Uh, I haven't used it a ton, but I'm going to do a demo on that next week. Um, I thought it might be something you guys might want to see, just for the heck of it, uh, how it works. So uh, that's what I've got planned for next week. Um, I was making um, some little trinket dishes last week, and... Um, that saw came in real handy when um, when I was cutting. I have six by six sheets of copper, and let's see, I can't talk and do this. <laughs> I have um, I have some six by six inch pieces of uh, copper sheet. And I was making um, three-inch copper trinket dishes, and I can only get two um, copper cutouts on the um, on that one sheet. So I wanted to. Well, you know what? I'll explain it when I'm doing it because um, it's. I think it's kind of hard to understand the concept um, without actually seeing it, but I'll be able to explain it better. I keep screwing this up here. Okay, now I've got it. Can't walk and chew gum. can see that. <laughs> oh, you guys are funny. Well, I may make it look easy, but um and it and it is actually once you get the hang of it. Um it's like anything else. The more you do it, the better you get at it, and the faster it goes. And the bandsaw, the micro bandsaw, was just shy of $500. Um, the shipping and tax kind of irked me because that was like gosh that was like another 60 bucks which uh, I thought was pretty outrageous but if you want the product you got to pay for it you know the shipping and the and the tax the tax kind of threw me it was like 30 some dollars um 
But, you know, I guess Uncle Sam wants their money, so they're they're getting on these um, companies to charge tax now, where it used to be if you bought something in a different state, you didn't get charged um, sales tax. But now uh, they're cracking down and and uh, and you got to pay. So, um, yeah, but I got the uh, the water cooling attachment and I think that was an additional sixty dollars. And to me, that was worth it because the metal gets really hot when um, you're sawing it. So. You know, if you're just doing quick little cuts, that's probably not a big deal. But um, when I was doing cutting those uh, six by six sheets in half, I was really glad uh, that I had the water. So there's a few little quirky things that uh, could be better, could be better designed. Uh, but for the most part, I'm satisfied with it. So... Okay, but giving you a demo on it is probably the best way for me to uh, explain it to you because uh, to see it in action, although it's quite loud. So when uh, I'm running the saw, I won't be talking probably, uh, just so you know. Okay, so that's moving along pretty well. Okay, I'll do a couple more and then I'll start, um, I'll do the clasp on one end and add some bling. And then you guys can decide if this is a project you want to do or not. But it goes pretty quick and I kind of like doing this in the evenings uh, when I'm relaxing and I'm sitting on my uh, easy chair in the living room. And um, I can do this. I can keep this on my lap. And uh, I just have like a little lap tray. And it's easy to do that. And I can be in the living room with my husband and watch TV. Although pretty much I don't watch it. I just kind of listen. All right. So, like I had said, um, you can put any type of clasp on there that you want. I happened to put a, a toggle on this one, but I'm going to put a um, an S-hook, and I will make one for you, and then... Um, I will put one on, on one end, and then we'll put some little uh, dangles on. So what I'm going to do is take uh, a piece of 14 gauge wire, and let's see here. All right, so I'm going to measure two and a quarter inches of wire for the pliers that I'm using for this for the right size loop that I want. So I'm going to cut that on my mark. Get this out of here so I don't get it dirty. All right, and take my chasing hammer and just pound the tip of, of the wire a little bit flat. Okay, and then I'm going to take my small round nose pliers and curl the tip of the wire 
into a little P shape like this, or that way. All right. And then I'm using long round nose pliers, and I'm going to put that little P shape all the way back to the widest part of my pliers. And then with my thumb, I'm just going to push that wire up and over to touch the back of that P. So now I have like a little shepherd's hook. And then I'm going to take the other end of the wire and put it in a large area here. And the pliers are the wires just level with the plier. I'm going to roll it away from me. Usually takes another or like one and a half rolls. And you have a little S hook. And I take my chasing hammer and I just dap this arch right here just to, to give it a little bit of texture. It hardens the wire. You could use a popsicle stick or a craft stick to hold this down so you don't have to uh, worry about smashing your fingers. In this case, I'm living dangerously. And I'm as I'm tapping it, I'm also kind of pulling it, stretching it a little bit, just on that arc. And then, sometimes it gets a little bit out of shape when you're pounding on it. You can just tweak it a little bit with your uh, flat nose pliers. Just make sure everything is aligned properly. And there's your easy clasp. So I would, of course, I would um, patina this. All, all these rings I've already put in liver of sulfur. So I, I have like um, a jar of them that I always have ready. So they've already been uh, patinaed. So I won't add this one on there. I will add one that I've already put the patina on wherever that is. Here it is. So this one's already been done. And I will just put this in on this end. And then that'll be my clasp. And on the other end, I'm not going to put that on there because um, I haven't checked my length. I'm almost there, actually. But on the other end, I would add a soldered jump ring. This was also 14 gauge. I would put that on the other end. All right, let's see here. Chris, the handout will be on the group page. Um, I will post that after after the video's done, after the demo's done. I always post them after because sometimes I find that I need to add something, maybe that we talked about, something that I missed. And um, so I always, uh, you know, post them later. So, uh, but they'll be, it'll be right after the, the, uh, the demo's over. Um, also, in case you guys um, don't realize, on the group page, <clears throat> on the main discussion page, at the very top, there's um, a box that says Featured. If you click on that box, all of the demos that I've done since the very beginning are listed in order by date and project um, so that you can find everything easily. Um, I, I don't think a lot of people realize that that's what that is, but... That's really um, the only way that I could figure out <clears throat> to post all this stuff so that you always have it available. Okay. Hey, Jazz. Hey, Dawn. All right. 
yeah, you should be able to see all of all of the videos. So and you and also be able to print up all of the um, handouts. Those are in the file section. Okay, so that is pretty much the construction of the barrel. I can go over it again if you want me to uh, with the larger rings, uh, just just to get it down pat. Um, okay, so I am going to put, I like the crystals, so I'm going to put some crystals. Let's move back up here. I'm going to put some crystals on the bracelet that I'm working on. And if you look at... Um, the bracelet Marianne I haven't done this in 16 or 14 but I'm pretty sure it could be done with it um, I don't see why it wouldn't some patterns don't do well with real thick jump rings but there seems to be a lot of space in here um, I'm pretty sure I have some of those jump rings, so maybe I can work up a little piece later and see how that lays. But the Byzantine is always, to me, that's always a really nice look for a guy's bracelet, too. All right, so if you look in between each barrel, there is the connecting ring that we did, and that's where I put um, my crystals on those particular rings. And on this one, I did a crystal on both sides of that ring. Can you see that? <clears throat> so here's that middle ring, and I placed a crystal on each side. Okay, all the way down. That gives a nice full look. You don't have to, you could just go um, one row if you wanted to but I think having them on both sides uh, lays nice when you're wearing it uh, and it and it just looks a little bit fuller. So I always make my um, my little dangles or doodads or whatever you want to ca call them. I make these a lot when I'm doing shows and I have I have to sit still for uh, several hours. And I don't have a lot of choice of what I can do, but I can't just sit there. I have to keep my hands busy. So I bring my crystals and, and my uh, little 6-0 beads and I wire wrap them. And then I can easily have them available when, um, when I want to put them on something. I don't have to sit there and, and wrap all of them. So I'll wrap a few just to give you... Um, well, darn, I didn't put any beads on the table. I put my pins and my tools, but I didn't put any beads on there. So let me just grab a couple beads. I'll be right back. Okay, it wouldn't be a demo from me unless I forget something. All right, let's do... All right, so... Put my head pin. Now these are two inch head pins. Uh, they're copper. They were bright copper when uh, when I got them and then I put them all in liver of sulfur and cleaned them. These are yucky jobs but um, once you get them all done it's just so nice to be able to, to just pull stuff out as you need it. All right so I'm going to put my round nose pliers, as just standard size round nose pliers, and put them right on top of the bead and 
push my wire away from me then roll my pliers up on top so what I want to do is form a loop it really doesn't matter if you do it exactly like I do but your goal is that you're trying to wrap a loop around the tine of the plier then I hold on to the loop with my round nose pliers of course I don't have my chain nose pliers either Okay, then I grab the wire, the tip of the wire and the tip of the plier, okay, and wrap at the base of that loop. You want to get right up to that base and, and uh, twist around, wrap the wire around. It should go around at least two times. Uh, but more importantly, um, it should reach the top of the bead. So if it takes two turns or if it takes three turns, you know, that's fine as long as it is touching the bead so that the bead is not wobbling around there. And then I cut off the excess wire as close to the, um, to the uh, pin as I can. And then I... There's always a little piece that's sticking up, and then I take my chain nose pliers in and just push that in a little bit so there's nothing sharp sticking out. Okay, so I have a little video uh, on doing that, the steps on doing that, um, on the Artisan's Workshop business page, and it go, that's all I focus on is just the wire wrapping um, just making that loop it's a nice sturdy loop it's not going anywhere I'll do another one pliers at the top of the bead push it away from me roll my pliers over bend the wire over and under just to make that loop I always think of it as a guy with a, a scarf on him, like that. Then hold the pliers, hold the loop with my round nose pliers, change my hands so that I can use my dominant hand to wrap, grab the tip of the wire with the tip of the pliers, and roll at the base of the loop and all the way around till you touch the top of that bead. Snip the wire as close as possible. Then tuck that little nib of wire in with your chain nose pliers, being very careful not to crack your crystal because if you get too close that can that can happen. Okay? Let me check for comments here. Yeah, it's a cool pattern. Uh, I think it is. I, I have made a necklace out of this just as a chain, you know, and I thought that was kind of cool. Hey, Joanne. Okay. But yeah, Marianne, I'll try the thicker wire and see how that looks, because that's kind of uh, that's kind of a good idea. All right, uh, Jazz. I've been getting my copper wire from either Eurotool or the Beadsmith because I have accounts with both of them. Uh, but it's artistic wire, and the wire is bare copper, not natural. They have all kinds of colored wires, and you want bare copper. If you get anything else, it's going to have a coating on it, and um, then you won't be able to patina that. So that's just something um, 
to keep in mind before you order. But artistic wire, it comes in spools um, up to, oh, I guess, I mean, there's all kinds of gauges, but um, the ones I primarily get on the spools are 18, 20, 22, 24. And then anything thicker than 18 gauge, it's usually in a bag. It's in, it's uh, it's spooled in a in a wire. I don't know. It's just wire kind of wrapped up, but it's in a baggie. And um, so the 16 and the 14 and the 12 come that way. Those are a little bit harder to get, but Euro Tool and uh, the Beadsmith carry those for sure. I'm sure some of the other companies, uh, the jewelry uh, companies, I don't know that Rio has it, but um, there are a lot of other jewelry companies online that you can get those things from as well. So, okay. So, so to attach, I will start um, by opening very carefully opening where the split is. You ha you can do it two ways. You can either do it like I'm going to show you here or you can add a jump ring and um, and put that on. I, I would rather just do it this way. So I'm going to put that on here on one way and close it. And then take that same jump ring and move, and just move it along and get that opening, find that opening on the other side of the bracelet to attach the opposite crystal on there. It would be better for two chain nose pliers for this one rather than uh, the flat nose because you've got more surface space. Um, that uh, it'd be easier to hold on to. Just because I'm showing it to you guys, it doesn't want to cooperate. But this is how I do it. but I should have the other chain nose pliers would make my life easier. And then just make sure that you've got that ring closed real well so these don't slip out. So you would just follow that all the way down, adding your crystals and alternating your colors or whatever floats your boat. Now, on that handout that I was mentioning, you know, I said that I had, had put some enlarged pictures on the last, very last page. So you might want to just look at that and not necessarily print them because uh, you would use an awful lot of ink. If that's not an issue for you, uh, then go ahead and, and do that. But uh, it's just mainly to get you uh, to understand the uh, placement of the rings. Do you get it? You get the gist of it? You could probably hang just about anything on there if you wanted. You could, Wendy, you certainly could. If you knew what you were going to do, um, you could certainly add your beads at that time. That's actually a very good idea.
Oh, I see Deb, you mentioned that as well. Okay. Yeah, you could. I, you know, I like to make my life difficult. <laughs> you know, that just seems like how it always is. Um, that's a very good idea to put them on as you go along. As long as you know what you want to do ahead of time, um, why not? That would definitely make sense. Yeah, well, I'm not always the sharpest knife in the drawer, you know? <laughs> All right. So actually, um, this is pretty much it. Um, I could review putting the links together with the big ones again, if you want, for anybody who came in late, uh, you tell me. And we'll see. <laughs> Deb, you're so sweet. Liar. <laughs> you're just kidding. All right. Um... All right. <laughs> you guys are the best. You are the best. Yeah, you know, let let me let me add a couple on. I have to um add a little bit of length to this anyway. And let's just see if that's going to be in the way or or not you know, by adding the beads on. So let's see here. Because you would do that. Let me, let's see here. You would do that. I'll backtrack here a minute. My little handle, foam handles coming off here okay all right let's take that is intriguing me now because I always seem to make more work for myself Let's open this up and take these off just for the benefit of the doubt. All right, so that's the loop that we would be connecting the crystals on. So let's put a crystal on here and a crystal on here. and close that very well. All right, now put this in. You've got to keep those crystals out of the way, I see, but that's probably minor in comparison to putting them all on, opening and closing them all. can't talk. Ta-da! It can be done. But you have to keep them, um, you know, 
they're going to flop around in your work just a little bit, but if you can deal with that, um, that's not so bad. So, that works. You learn something new every day. <laughs> uh, do I have a toggle clasp that, uh, that I could use? Well, the one that I had on here, I mean, you're talking toggle, that's just a little... Little bar, little loop, and bar. That's the one that I had put on here that I already had. This is something that was pre-made. I didn't make it. Uh, versus this S-Link that will have a, a round circle at the end, you know, that I'll feed through there. Either one of them work fine, in my opinion. Um, it's just a matter of what you want to put on there. You could put a fancy clasp on there, a pre-made fancy clasp or, uh, something like that. Um, yes, Renee, if you have a jump ring maker, you can be making your own jump rings. It's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful because that way you can make all the sizes, uh, you know, it, it's just great to have them to draw from. So, yeah, that that definitely, you guys are the best. You can definitely do that. Yes, Chris, these are 4 millimeter 18 gauge wire, and I think they would be just fine in 16 gauge as well. Uh, a lot of the stuff that I'm doing uh, more recently, I've been using 16 gauge with, and um, uh, I, I just like the heft of it. It's a little bit heftier, you know, so this is definitely doable. And if you wanted to just put a few crystals on, you could do that. You wouldn't have to necessarily do the whole thing if you're doing the bracelet with bling. But I will dig out um, some 16 gauge wires and um, or rings and see if how that looks I don't think it'd be much different it would just be a little weightier so um, some of the uh, chain mail weaves I think I said that before some of the chain mail weaves um, are pretty specific in certain sizes of wire and rings that you use um, I know with the Byzantine, I typically do it with four millimeter um, rings just like this in 18 gauge. Um, if you try, I mean, I have tried to do like say five and a half millimeters in 18 gauge wire and it just doesn't lay right. You know, it's okay, but it's not really the intended look. So, um, you know, you, you can just kind of experiment with some of this too, if you have different wires to choose from. So yeah, I think it's really pretty. This would be very pretty in silver as well, not just copper, but silver, uh, it would, it would look pretty cool. So it would be fancy. So, all right. Yeah, jazz copper is great. I, I I don't know if you use copper very often, uh, but I've been using it for for several years now, and I love it. Um, yeah, you're right, Deb. The books have charts on how to calculate if you want to use the different gauges. There's like an aspect ratio and inside diameter and outside diameter. There's lots of different uh, things to know about jump rings and how they put together so 
Um, you know, there's a lot out there. Yeah, Marianne, it, it would be gorgeous in silver. I've made similar things like this in silver and put put the little crystals on there, and they're, they're really pretty. So it's just up to you, you know. And the price of silver, uh, you know, it kind of fluctuates up and down a little bit. It's, it's not too bad right now, but uh, it could be a whole lot better. Of course, it could be a whole lot worse, too. So um, I, I guess it just depends on what what you want. So it would, Deb, you're right, it would. Yep. And I try to keep my copper uh, things that I've made already. Uh, I put them in little baggies and I bought some of that um, anti-tarnish strips and put them in the baggie and, uh, you know, kind of push all the air out and, you know, just try to keep it from getting too dark because the copper will uh, continue to patina, you know, with oxidation uh, in the air and stuff. It will continue to get dark over time. So if you want to clean it up, you can either use uh, the 40000 Boro steel wool, um, and and polish that up a little bit with that. It knocks off the the oxidation. You could use a pro polish pad, the little spongy pads, uh, or you can also use that flash shiner that we've been showing uh, a few times to get some of that oxidation off. But uh, it it will turn over time. There's there's no uh, there's no stopping it. So. All right, uh, I think that's going to be it for today. Yet, Marianne, it never ends. A jump ring maker is a wonderful tool to have in your in your shop. It it just it will pay for itself in no time, really. Uh, but it's like one thing leads to another with this stuff, and you always find no matter how many tools and toys you have. There's always something else that you need. It's the law. It's just it's just the way it works. So um, you know, get ready to uh, accept that because um, if you want to do the stuff, uh, there's lots of different tools that are required. It just doesn't end. So, like I've said many times before, this stuff has been acquired over the years. It's not like I just got everything overnight, but um, but that's a very that the the jump ring maker and a disc cutter uh, those are very important tools uh, that are pricey, but they're they're well worth it over time for sure. So, all right, guys, <coughs> I'm gonna go for now. I've got uh, orders to pack. Thank you so much for those of you who've been. Uh, uh, ordering my lamp work beads and things and uh, I will get them out as soon as possible Monica you want a rolling mill <coughs> excuse me yeah that that's a really nice thing to have as well um, but it's it's all all over time so <laughs> that's right it, it you know it, there is no difference between wanting and needing, like Deb says, we need everything. <laughs> if you like to do multiple techniques, you pretty do pretty much do need everything. It, it's just it's just the way it is. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the demo. I hope you get it. Uh, it's a fun thing. Always when you learn a new pattern, it's a little bit of a, a learning curve. But just stick with it. You'll get it. Uh, I will put out the um, the handout in just a couple minutes. So um, if you make a barrel bracelet, well, that's not the barrel. If you make a bra barrel bracelet, make sure you post it on the group page. I'd love to see what you guys do. Maybe you'll come up with something different. Um, but I'd like to see it nonetheless. So... All right, you guys, I'll see you next week, same time, same place, and same day, of course. Take care. Bye-bye.